Irish Times and <laughs> Ian Burnside. Thank you, that's me. Take three. Elish, for a mandolin, that's always a joy to play. It is, and a joy to sing as well. It's not all about you, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> but do you love it? I absolutely love it. I love singing foray. There's like an, an inner metronome going on in foray, which I think gives it all this, this lovely, fresh, light impetus. I mean, you can feel it in the mandolin. Do, 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 do. So you can just breeze along on that and just keep going. And, and you love singing French music generally? I mean, do I really do. I mean, there's modelling. Obviously, is about it's it's about nothing. But I mean, you get some French songs that are like the Du Parc, fantastic Du Parc, with the amazing poetry that you can really put your heart and soul into. I mean, in the modelling, it's it's almost like he's describing a picture. Yeah. Yeah, so there, there's not much to get your teeth into along the lines of no, no, a, a fantastic storyline. Yeah. But French music, I think, does offer a lot of that, really romantic love songs. Now, we're here to uh, talk about the Wigmore Song Competition. Can you just fill us in on what part competitions have played in the build-up of your own career? Well, yes, uh, quite a big role and I mean they're very very important for young singers to put yourself on the map I mean of course there's always a financial incentive and um, like when I won the leader prize at Cardiff Singer of the World the Rosenblatt Recital Prize I won five thousand pounds and of course immediately you think oh great five grand you know because you're a young probably student at the time but in the long term, of course, the kudos that winning a competition as a young singer brings to you and the exposure you get from it, that's the real the benefit real of winning competitions. Yeah. And, and even just the preparation for a competition. So if you're not the winner or you don't come second or anything like that, you still get so much from even just auditioning for the competition. Mm. I find myself over the years, I've learned a lot just from the auditions. You don't always get everyone, you know. Uh, now, do you have any tips for aspiring entrants to the, to the competition in terms of preparing a programme, for example? How do you select your rep? Well, uh, selecting the rep, I mean, I think it's very important to go for things that really speak to you. There's no point in picking things that you think, oh, I'm going to do this because it's going to be very clever and very difficult and people will be impressed. You will always perform something that you love to sing much better than you will something that you don't have a feeling for so pick things and often it's a good idea to pick things you've done before that maybe yeah. you've lived with for a while and and in some instances it might be a good idea to put on a little recital somewhere just for your friends of course so it's road so they, tested exactly yeah yeah 
Contrast is important in, in a programme too, isn't it? I think contrast is very important. And I mean, there's always, I think it's good to think about your finisher song. And you, I, I myself always feel I have to make a decision. Do I leave them going out on a high after singing a big, loud, fast thing with lots of high notes? Or do I leave them with something like Nacht und Träume and leave peacefulness and... I can't recall an Elish Town programme which ever ended with Nacht und Träume or anything peaceful. Have you ever not taken the leave them in a high note option? Refresh my memory. <laughs> Occasionally, I do like to sing "Danny Boy" as my final encore. <laughs> but then I bet you've got—I bet you've got something up your sleeve just in case. Just in case, yeah. No, it is, a, but it's a very important point. And also, look, you're a very—you're brilliant at funny songs. I think humour is very important not to neglect, isn't it? Oh, it is. You know, when you've got to, t- of course, you've got to tap into your own strengths. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you can do funny songs and make people laugh, I mean, I think what we often forget with singing and music and it, like I see it all the time when I'm working with directors and conductors and everyone is so obsessed with everything being so perfect and in the end of the day we're here to entertain people people forget about that when the audience come they've paid whatever they've paid 25 pounds up to godly knows how much to, to have a good night be out. entertained yeah. and I know when I'm sitting watching the telly I want to have a laugh and I want to, or I want to feel something emotionally so you've got to give that to people you do mm. it's part of our job 